The 2024 presidential election is one of the most chaotic election cycles we've had in recent memory. Will Trump beat Biden in a landslide? Will Biden be the underdog? Will they tie in the Electoral College? Will RFK actually win a few states? Or will they have the closest election that we've had in American presidential history? Stay tuned to find out. Now before we get started with the video, only 7% of you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell so you don't miss another video that I post, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hello everyone, welcome to the video. And today I'm going to be going over the 5 most likely scenarios, or 5 possible scenarios for the 2024 presidential election. And the first one I'm going to be going over is what if Biden, you know, has an underdog performance? What if he, you know, wins the popular vote basically by the same amount he won it by in 2020? His approval rating kind of dips. What would the Electoral College look like? So this is the first scenario. So basically, Biden gets 51.5% of the vote. Donald Trump gets stuck at 47%. And we start filling out some of these states. And you're going to see that there's a couple of states that are going to fall in that likely category. If you look, all the, you know, competitive states are basically completely gone. More than likely, Alaska falls under a seven point victory. All of these states are going to be safe blue. All of the Northeast would end up being safe Democratic, including New York and Illinois. Iowa and Ohio are likely. Texas, Florida are going to be lean states for the most part. Montana is still going to be in that R plus 10 column, including a couple of states here. But let's check up on Kansas. South Carolina does, in fact, fall under that 10 point threshold, including the second district in Maine. The second district in Nebraska would be a likely margin, including the states of probably Virginia would probably be over a 10 point win in this scenario. Uh, let's double check here. Yes, it would be over a 10 point win new mexico however is still not in the oh yeah it is it is never mind never mind and then you would have this is the model by the way guys this model i'm using is actually my own model this is my own uh 2024 presidential election model it takes account the swing the trend from 2016 and from 2012 to 2020 and uses the results from the previous two elections and i get all the polling averages to produce this if we go down here, Kansas still over 10 points. You would look at Maine. Maine is likely as well. The Maine at large would be a pretty good victory. So overall, basically, Trump ends up getting absolutely destroyed here. New Hampshire is still a likely state, including, oh, wait, wrong one, Minnesota. North Carolina would be lean. Hawaii would, un would end up being a safe state. And then over here, Michigan. Pennsylvania would both be lean states, including Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. So this would be the Electoral College. If Biden kind of pulls off an upset, he would probably do really good with college-educated voters here. I don't think he would do well with African-American voters. I think this is an area like maybe Trump really underperforms with african not with african americans but with like white suburban women or white college educated voters if there's like a mass exodus of them i think biden can somehow win the presidential election trump would probably get 78 million votes and biden would probably exceed his vote total from 2020 but that is very unlikely as of right now i actually also think that biden can't even win wisconsin but this is a hypothetical scenario if he pulled an upset victory, the next one is going to be, you know, technically would be the closest presidential election history scenario. So what if they end up going through like the most like chaotic presidential election scenario ever? What would that look like? More than likely, if that were to happen, Biden would probably still be winning the popular vote for the most part. His approval rating would probably be a little bit closer and what would happen is you'd basically have a scenario, okay, where Biden's winning the popular vote by about, you know, roughly, so to speak, he's winning the popular vote by about, he's he's winning it by about something in regards of like three points, possibly. This is him probably winning the popular vote by around three, or actually, it's probably him only winning it by three and a half 
maybe, and you'd have this scenario where basically some of the states practically stay the same. Nothing really changes for the most part, except Virginia does fall under that likely category now. The state of New Mexico is almost under. The state of Alaska would still be likely, including Montana. South Carolina would go over that 10-point margin now. And I do believe if you were to go back to the states of Texas and Florida, they would be in the likely category now. And then basically what would happen is that Michigan and Pennsylvania would stay about the same. However, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia would end up flipping into Donald Trump's column with Nevada being extremely tightly close. So this would be that very, very close electoral college scenario. Oh, I actually messed this up. I should have uh, seen what I was doing there. Um, would actually be here. So of course, Donald Trump would end up doing pretty good in most of the areas. All of the 2020 states would go back to their likely margins. Florida would be added into that likely column. And all these states would still be safe Democratic. New Hampshire is still safe Dem. The main second district would still be under a 10-point win, including Alaska as well. Both New Mexico and Colorado are over 10-point wins, including Illinois, including Minnesota. However, Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia would be in that category, as well as Nevada being very, very, very competitive. So Donald Trump would basically be winning the Electoral College, 272 Electoral College votes to Joe Biden's. Wait, what am I? What? I think I clicked on the wrong one. It was 272 to 266. The next scenario is going to be what if, you know, RFK takes a couple of states in the presidential election, what would that even look like? Donald Trump would probably do really good in his Republican areas for the most part. I think Ohio and Iowa would be closer as well as Texas and Florida would still be lean Republican, including South Carolina, probably getting a little bit closer. You'd see Biden kind of underperform in some of the Dem areas for the most part. He'd probably start underperforming in some areas. And then you'd probably see New York and Illinois probably narrow up quite significantly. And you'd probably have the state of Virginia be a little bit closer. You'd have the first district of Maine get close. And more than likely, the state of Maine would probably be a state that would go to RFK. In this hypothetical scenario, you'd have the you know, state of Nebraska basically vote you know, Republican at that point. Biden would probably barely hold on to the second district. Donald Trump would probably perform kind of mediocre in the second district of Maine. At this point, I would suspect maybe Alaska would be a state that probably would vote for RFK in this scenario. Hawaii would get a lot closer in this. I think Trump would end up placing in second to Biden. It would probably be only a seven point win at this point because RFK would take away a lot of votes here. Colorado, I think, would be a state that would narrow up quite significantly as well. And I think the state of New Mexico would also kind of narrow up quite a bit too. I think North Carolina would be lean R. I think that the state of Minnesota would be lean Dem. And I also think that the state of Michigan would be really close, but I think Biden would barely hold on to it. I think Biden would also hold on to the state of Pennsylvania here, including New Hampshire being very, very, very close. But I think maybe RFK does actually take New Hampshire in this scenario. I also think he'd take the states of Nevada and Arizona in this scenario. And I actually think they wouldn't even really be that close. I think he would probably take them in this scenario. I think Trump does, in fact, win Georgia and Wisconsin in this scenario. So you do have a scenario where Trump gets 258 electoral votes. Biden gets 254, but RFK actually gets 26. And the election is held under 270, and there has to be a contingent election at that point. The next scenario is going to be, what if Trump and Biden tie in the Electoral College? Now, I can't necessarily replicate this with the model, but in order for this to really happen, what would probably happen is both candidates would do really well with their respective coalitions. Trump would basically max out the base with the Republicans and more than likely Biden would still perform respectively well with his Democratic base and actually get a couple of safe states in his column. I think New Hampshire would be a state that falls under five, including Minnesota, but maybe Virginia stays. So Biden does well with his coalition as well. And Trump ends up performing well with his. And more than likely, 
what would happen in this scenario is that Donald Trump would have to pick off the second district in Nebraska. It would be a little bit of a surprise for him to flip it. But then essentially what would have to happen is he would have to win North Carolina by a lot. He wins Georgia by a lot. He wins Arizona by a lot. And he wins Nevada. And then the Rust Belt scenario would basically be that Biden just ends up doing pretty good in the Rust Belt. And you'd have Wisconsin end up being in that category. And Donald Trump would end up with 269 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 269. If this were to happen, basically Trump would be performing extremely well with Hispanic and African American voters, whereas Biden would be performing very well with the college educated vote. And it would kind of divide the country in a way where Trump would win 269 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 269. He would do well in Georgia, Arizona, Nevada due to African-American and Hispanic trends, as well as the Sun Belt, where Biden would kind of barely hold on because a lot of college educated voters up here would basically just swing a little bit towards Biden just enough to hold the blue wall. And it would kind of reinforce the whole concept of the blue wall as a whole. And the last scenario is what if Trump literally just wins the Electoral College by over five points? Like, what if he does win the popular vote by five? I have the perfect scenario for you. So basically 5.2 and basically 4.4 and then another 4.4. So it would be a four, it'd be an 8.7 swing or actually I think it would be 9.2 .9 and Biden's approval rating at this point in time would probably be significantly down. So you'd have an insane scenario at this point. Basically Donald Trump would be performing extremely well in his you basically his regular solid states that he has texas and florida would be added into this column wisconsin pennsylvania nevada texas ohio florida all of these states would be added into that safe republican column nevada is added into that safe republican column over 10 point victory as well as north carolina alaska would be added into that safe republican column Michigan, Pennsylvania would still be under a 10 point win, but even Georgia would be, you know, in that, you know, safe would be even Georgia would be in that safe, you know, Republican category. If you look at these states of Colorado and New Mexico, they are extremely close with New Mexico, basically almost flipping at that point. If you look at the state of Virginia and New Hampshire, as well as Minnesota, they actually all do flip at this point in time. I believe that New Hampshire is really close, or actually, no, it's Virginia that's really close in this scenario. They both flip very easily. These go down a little bit more. New York and Illinois actually narrow up quite significantly, with Illinois actually falling into the lean Republican or lean Democratic category. California and Hawaii are still 16 point wins. However, all of these states fall under a likely category as well. A lot of the polling in Hawaii would probably get a lot closer. So I think for the sake of the scenario, maybe Hawaii does actually narrow up in this scenario. Uh, let's add Arizona into that safe Republican column. And if we go to the Northeast, more than likely, it's going to be a slam dunk for Donald Trump. Donald Trump does actually win the second district of Nebraska in this scenario by a lean margin. He performs extremely well in a lot of his states. He actually wins Maine at, Maine at large in this scenario. This state, the first district is still safe and the main second district is still going to be there. And then all of these states would basically be still be over 10 point wins, except for Connecticut and New Jersey, these states would still be likely states in this scenario, giving Donald Trump 402 electoral college votes to Joe Biden's 196, and more than likely he'd probably pick off New Mexico, and he'd win 347 to 199 in the electoral college. So these are the most likely 2024 election scenarios that could probably occur, depending on how the electorate is. And so if you guys did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell so you don't miss another video that I post. And I hope to see you guys later tonight's stream.